what is area? Well, as much as mathematics is a machine for answering questions, it's also a machine for generating questions. You know, it's a machine for interrogating even basic concepts. And one of those basic concepts is area. What do I even mean when I'm talking about area? Well, if I build a one by one rectangle, just a unit square, I could use that unit square to measure a bigger rectangle, to try to measure the area of that bigger rectangle. Here I've got a six by four rectangle and I can fill it with four rows of six or six rows of four unit squares. And then the area is just counting the number of unit squares, right? There's 24, six times four unit squares. And if I had an X by Y rectangle, it would just have an area then of X times Y. Let's try this with a different shape. I mean, a square again, but uh, a square where the side length isn't a whole number. So here's a root two by root two square. So what's its area? Well, I'll just use the area formula for rectangles, which also works for squares. And I'll find that the area is root two times root two and root two squared is two. Now I can take a unit square and just put another unit square next to it. And that's a two by one rectangle. So it also has area two. Now, what does it mean to say that these two polygons have the same area? They've both got area two. And one way to certify that these have the same area is to cut the one of them up and build the other one out of the resulting pieces. So if I slice the root two square along the diagonals, I'll get four triangles, which I can rearrange to build the two by one rectangle. And look, I mean, by the Pythagorean theorem, you know, you can even see that the, the one by one triangle there, the length of the hypotenuse is in fact root two. So for polygons in the plane, this is really what area is getting at. It's a single number that summarizes something really important about polygons. Right? It's one number uh, so that if two polygons have the same area, the same number associated with these two polygons, then I can cut the one polygon up and get the other polygon. And conversely, if I've got two polygons and they've got different areas, then I can't dissect the one and get the other. So let's try this with a root three by root three uh, square. So its area is uh, root three squared, its area is three. And I can put three unit squares next to each other and get a three by one rectangle. Now the challenge is how do I cut up this square in order to build that three by one rectangle? They've got the same area. So how do I dissect the one and get the other? Well, here's one solution. I could slice off a triangular corner and then slice the resulting quadrilateral along a horizontal line to build two triangles and a pentagon, which I can then rearrange to build the three by one rectangle. I think that's a fun answer. And really any time in mathematics that we answer a question, we should question the answer. We should try to think if there's other questions that we could ask that are like that question. Well, in here, uh, you know, you can ask the same thing for a square root of five by square root of five square. That thing's got area five. That's the same as a five by one rectangle. That also has area five. So somehow it must be possible to chop up the, uh, the square in order to get the rectangle. It's a fun thing for you to, for you to think about. So I encourage you to think about that. I mean, there's also something deeper here. I mean, there's more of a, maybe a philosophical uh, question for us to think about. And so what is area? You know, in this course, when we were thinking about uh, whole numbers and the integers, when we were studying the integers, we studied them by formulating axioms initially. We came up with the ring axioms. Then we were proving things from those ring axioms to deduce facts about the integers. Well, you could do the same thing with area. You could try to build up an axiomatization of area. What sort of axiom should area satisfy? Well, area should be a function that takes in a polygon and gives us some non-negative real number. It measures the area of, of polygons. And as a function, it's got certain properties, like the area of a rotated polygon should be the same as the unrotated polygon, the original polygon. Or if you take a polygon and you translate it by uh, shifting along some vector, that should not change its area. So the area of P shifted by a vector V should be the same as the area P. And area should satisfy some kind of inclusion exclusion principle. So the area of a union of two things should be the area of the one thing, the area of the second thing, and then subtract the area that you double count, the intersection of those, of those two things. Now, are those axioms enough to characterize area? Well, definitely not because we're missing some kind of normalization. I mean, the area has to be pegged to some basic unit that we're measuring. And we could do that by saying that the area of a unit square, the area of the one by one square, we'll just define that to be equal to one. 
Now, are these axioms enough to characterize area? So as a challenge to you, I'd encourage you to try to take these axioms and see if you can, for instance, prove just from these axioms uh, something about the area of triangles, for instance. You know, and hopefully you can imagine how you might use these axioms then to, uh, well, to prove the various facts about area that we'll want for the, uh, for the problem sets.